Hello everyone, it's 2023 and I am back with a new video. This time we will talk about how to prepare when you create a measurement program, regardless of what measurement software you use. So stay with me and find out how I do it in my day-to-day -day work and I do hope some of these informations will help you in your work. So let's get to it. The first step when you want to prepare for a measurement program is to see that the part you have to measure is suited for the CMM you operate. This means that you will have to know the capabilities of the CMM, like the measuring range, its accuracy and resolution. If it is possible, it's better to have the physical part at your side when you start. I included this step because it's easy to overlook this information when you operate different CMMs with different softwares. And I know that a lot of my subscribers work this way. So pay attention on what kind of job do you have to do and choose your CMM accordingly. The next step is to make sure that you have the latest drawing of the part or assembly and if you work with a CAD model, make sure you also have the latest version. So this was step number two. For step number three, you need to identify the dimensions requested to be measured and the datums related to them. Use a paper sheet drawing if you can and mark the dimensions with a color and the datums with another color. If you want to be eco-friendly, you can do this step in Adobe Writer. This will help you identify what you need from the drawing quickly when you work. Now you already know where to measure your item and what is requested to be measured. So in step number four, you need to choose your tools and by tools, I mean the styluses. Here make sure you define the tip diameter of the styluses you are going to use and what length is enough for the shaft of the styluses. It is recommended to use a small number of styluses with a small number of angles in order to keep the accuracy of the CMM high. Step number 5 is to create the measurement program in the measurement software you are using and save it according to your defined name convention. If you do not have a name convention, I suggest you set the base from now on. It will make things easier for you and whoever is using the measurement programs. Step number six, set the correct navigation part for your CMM around your part or assembly and around the fixture. It always helps to set the axis of the alignment from the part as the axis from the CMM. This way you will know from what axis you will approach the part no matter where your stylus is, is located in the measurement volume of the machine. Here is also the moment where you define the attack, retract and speed of the measurement. Notice how many steps we have to take and we did not touch the part until now. So in step number 7 we touch our first elements needed to create the first alignment. This alignment is usually used for locating the part, so a simple plane, a line and a point are suffice to ensure the location of the part in the measuring volume. You can also ignore the step if your main alignment is not that difficult to take manually. Next of course we have to touch the elements necessary to construct our datums for the main alignment. And here we have step number 8. You can use also Whatever elements you consider necessary to ensure that you touch correct the surface of your datums. For example, if you have to make a circular plane, use the diameter surrounding the plane to center its location and position. Make sure you name properly your datums, do not let them name as plane 1 or point 1. This will only confuse you in the future. Step number 9 comes with touching the elements required for creating the dimensions requested. Needless to say that you have to change the number of the elements to match your dimension number from the drawing. 
Again, do not let the name of the elements as they are, like point one, line two, and so on. It will confuse you and whoever is working with your measurement program. We work with real parts in a real world where things are not perfect. This is why we have to use sometimes help alignments and help features in order to proper touch our elements. So this will cover step number 10. You can include here secondary alignments required from the drawing, like other datums beside the ones that you use in your main alignment. In step number 11, you can choose what way you want to define your dimensions from the drawing. Right after you did the elements from the part or assembly, or after you've taken all the elements for all the dimensions. When there is a small number of dimensions requested to be measured, I personally take all the elements and then construct the characteristics. But if there are a lot of dimensions, then I work step by step to keep track of what I did and have to do. I recommend marking the dimensions on the drawing when you are done with them. In step number 12, we check the results, see if we set out correct the nominals and the tolerances, and see if there are any anomalies in the results, like big deviations or no deviations whatsoever. There cannot be dimensions with result zero on the deviations, so keep an eye out for them too. Last step is to measure a part at least five times by taking it off and on its fixture to see if the measurements are stable. If not, of course you have to check and improve what is unstable. There you have it, 13 steps to take in order to make sure you do not omit anything. And these are just some of the general steps. I'm sure that you can add steps to your list if you think better about it. But if you do not want to bother, I do have a list prepared for Calypso programming and one for PCD misprogramming for my Patreons. So go to my Patreon channel, link in the description below, and support my work. And you will receive the list that you are interested in and much more in the future because I plan to step up the game there. Thank you for watching my video, hit that like button so other colleagues can find the information I am giving, subscribe if you are not a subscriber yet and if you want to see more content from me and do not forget, until next time, learn as much as you can.